Welcome to July's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is POW XN. Implement POW XN, which calculates X raised to the power N. So X is a number given to us and N is the exponent. We can imagine we're given 2 and 10, so this is going to return the number 1024 since that's the number calculated. Now, if you see this problem, the very first solution might just be to do, okay, x is a number given to us and n is going to be the exponent, just return that. And that works. So there we go, we're, we're, we solved it. But apparently this is considered cheating. How could we do it ourselves using the code? So let's say that we want to only use pr the primitive operators and um, some sort of logic to do this. Well, the straightforward method would be to uh, multiply 2 in a loop 10 times, right? Multiply it by itself 10 times with 2 and give that as the output. But that's going to be a O of n time complexity, right? So that, that actually takes too long. So what's another way that we can do it? Okay, well, let's think about an example. Like we're given number, say, uh, 2, and let's say n equals something like 7. Let's think about, like, what this exponent number uh, means and how we could divide that we can split that up to simplify our equation so if you think about 2 to 7 like this this actually is the same as going to be uh, 2 4 times 2 to the let's say uh, 2 and 2 to oops 2 to the 1 and notice how this exponent is like split up. If you add them all together, it's 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. And this would actually be the same thing. So that's helpful in that we could think about how we can use this um, exponent to simplify our equation. We can do this in logarithmic time. Or actually, we can use the bits, the bit representation of this 7 for each position and measure that to get um, our final answer instead of doing it n times, right? Okay, so let's think about like n, this exponent here. What does how is that represented in bits? Bits. So that would be represented by what? Would that be it? No, it would be represented like this, right? One, one, one. It's because two. This represents four plus two plus one. Um, in the same way, like this would be six, so on and so forth. So it's like with this bit representation, every position here is going to be represented by um, the multiple of t x by itself, right? So this he here at this position with one, that can be re represented by two. Here, this could be represented by uh, multiply by itself. This is going to be represented by four. And this right here, that's going to be represented by the value 16. Yeah, so if you think about it like this, right, why not just multiply wherever these numbers are, are 1 by the number that is going to be represented here, calculating at each, each time through this loop. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm explaining this very well, um, but hopefully we can go through it and code it out and see if it starts making sense. So it's like while we have an exponent, right, uh, first, we want to start with an output of how, what we're calculating here. So while there's an n, we want to check to see if this last position is a 1. And we can do that by using bit, operator, bit operators and say, OK, n and not that, uh, n1. If that last position is a 1, then multiply our output uh, with x. Okay, now as we move through, we're going to decrease our, our, our bits. Okay, and we can do that by um, using this. So that's going to decrease it by one position. And we want to actually uh, make sure our x that we multiply it with is now going to be represented by the next number. So that is going to be just x times x. So once this goes through the entire loop, uh, there should be no more n left. Then we could just return our output like this. Now, one thing to note is what if it's a negative number? What if the exponent that we're given is a negative number? 
So if that's the case, oops, if the n is less than zero, let's say, if it's less than zero, well, let's just um, make x equal to one over x, and we'll um, make sure that our n is gonna be multiplied by negative one, so that now it's positive, so that we can run the same loop. So that's just gonna be n times negative one. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm gonna first submit to our test case. Oh. Okay, so I think we need to first initialize our output. I don't know why I deleted that. And it looks good, let's submit that. And there, that's accepted. Okay, so that is was not easy. I mean, when you first saw this problem, it seemed easy, but um, yeah, I mean, this, this is kind of what they're hoping that you get rather than just using the Python uh, built-in functions. So I, ho I hope that elucidates it a little bit. There's different ways to do it. You could do it recursively um, without using the bit operators. Uh, that's a little bit trickier, but it's the same idea where each sort of position is like represented by, by two. And you do that by f um, f determining if there is a remainder when you do a modular by two. Yeah, so I think I'm going to stop it here. Um, if you still don't get it, I, I recommend looking at the discussion boards to to kind of look through it more. Otherwise, you know, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me because I know nothing.